Good afternoon and welcome to the Rotary Club of Georgetown. My name is Georgian Hewitt and I've had the great privilege of serving as president of this um, exceptional club uh, for the last year. And so I'm looking forward to today's meeting. Welcome everybody. It's so good to be in person. Uh, we held our Rotary board meeting uh, prior to this meeting. And uh, those of you who were here, I got a text from Jeff Cartledge who uh, his voice was lagging for a long time during during our meeting and he said he is in Ohio in a thunderstorm. So <laughs> we thought maybe he was in Alaska or something. I'm going to ask Jim Ducer to come up and give our invocation. <clears throat> if you would join me in thanksgiving for this opportunity to gather together to uh, in fellowship in service and to explore the idea that besides becoming a service club we will become a peacemaking club through service in god's name we ask our help for this and god bless us all everyone amen, amen. Thank you, Jim. You're, you're always so and nice. Forgive me for messing up the court. Oh, that's okay. That'll be Tim Hill Merritt. Tim, Tim Hill Merritt. Yeah. I'm a Catholic. I'm full of guilt. <laughs> Okay, so for those of you, uh, those of you online, and if you are if you're coming up to the podium, you're going to have to do a little dance with me. You're going to need to come to the right side because we do have a lot of chords. I'm just going to do a sound check online. Uh, Jean, Jim, Carol, can you all hear us again? Okay, we we lost our power there for a second. Not power, our sound. All right, so next, uh, I'm going to ask. I don't think Rodney's here. It's right in here. So, Tom, if you would come up and lead us in the pledge. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Tom. And then Wilson's going to come up and do our milestones. You have something for me to read? Here? It's on the screen. Oh, good. <laughs> they said to come this way. Milestones today. Nathan, Nathan Winstead. His birthday is June 20th. And Randy, I'm sitting back there for lunch. June 21st, his birthday. They never give the year on these. <laughs> Uh, David and Jenny Masserang have been married for 20 years on June 21st. And let's see, who, uh, Wilson and Lynn Morris, 37 years on June 24. I think it's June 22nd. <laughs> What's it say up there? Yeah, I'm gonna go with 22. Those, those of you that know Lynn, make sure you tell her that I caught that. <laughs> And club anniversary, Steve Shaw, six years on June 19th, and David Kellerman, our host, 11 years, June 20th. Salute. Salute. By the way, uh, Nathan had a big birthday this year. He's no longer eligible for under 40. All right, we're going to have introductions of guests and visiting Rotarians. We'll start with our guest. Does anybody have the guest they would like to introduce? And ideally, if you can come up here, that's great. If not, shout it out, shout it out loud. George, do you want to at least introduce, why don't you come up and introduce today at our board meeting, uh, we uh, approved the applications of two uh, new Rotarians, and so he's going to come up and introduce them. I'm going to try to dodge the cords here, but just in case, I do have my lawyer on speed dial. So, but no, this morning, as George Ann said, we uh, the, uh, proposals for application were presented and approved by the board. Uh, one of them was uh, Aaron Bose. Aaron, would you stand up, please?
Um, and the other was uh, Bri Ewan. He had to leave, he wasn't able to stay, but uh, congratulations to Aaron. If you get a chance, uh, stop by and meet him and say hello. Um, so I, we anticipate that uh, he'll probably, he and, he and Bri both will be inducted probably in a couple of weeks. So we're glad to have them aboard. George has done a great job with membership in a year that was difficult. And I'm going to actually, George wasn't here last week. And I asked uh, everybody who has been a member for a year or less, please stand because I want these uh, Rotarians to know who you are. And I want all of us to work hard to make them feel welcome because this was a difficult year to come in as a new member. Thank you, George. All right, do we have any visiting Rotarians? All right, very good. Well, welcome all. We're gonna do recognitions and announcements. And I know one of the first recognitions I wanna do is uh, today our meal was prepared by Zach, who is a culinary uh, student and uh, he, he prepared our meal today. So he's in the back and I just wanna give him Aren't we, aren't we glad to be back to buffets? A great thing. Meatloaf is wonderful. And uh, next week, uh, because it's my last meeting as president, I got to pick what we're having, and uh, we're having lasagna and oh. cake. So and and cookies for for Jim. <laughs> Jim loves those packaged cookies like you wouldn't believe. All right, thank you everybody. I know I could tell everybody's getting back into our uh, normal patterns, which is great. So when you get to the meeting each week, if you would please check in because starting July 1, and I'll say something about it, 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 we're starting July 1, our first meeting of July is July 2nd and we're not having a meeting because we always take that Friday off um, for the 4th of July holiday. So, um, but starting, in the new Rotary year, we're going to start taking attendance. All of you got attendance for this past year. Uh, we just felt like that was fair to all concerned because we had people online and then we were doing hybrids and going back and forth. And there are some people in this club like Patricia who have perfect attendance for so many years. And uh, we didn't want that to harm COVID to be a, a detriment to their uh, perfect attendance records. All right, pop-up service event. We uh, are going to join the City of Georgetown Parks and Recreation to do a San Gabriel Riverbank cleanup event on uh, Saturday, June 26th. There's a link to sign up in the trumpet. And uh, you can also just go online and put in San Gabriel Riverbank cleanup event. It said originally June 5th, so don't let that confuse you. It got moved because of bad weather. And um, it's from 8.30 to 10.30, but the cleanup part is from nine to 10. So get there, get signed in, you get your assignment, then you're gonna go out and pick up trash and then bring it back and get it bagged up and everything. There's gonna be a white tent at the Red Poppy Playground and I'm assuming that's where the big new playground is in the park. Does anybody know for sure? Okay. Okay. That you could park at the community center and um, and be able to walk there. Um, and we really want everybody who comes out. Uh, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Georgetown to wear your Rotary shirts. So also in the trumpet, um, uh, Kat, would you stand up? She's got on her Rotary Happens t-shirt. Um, there you go. Doesn't that look great? We can get those in tie-dye. Woo! <laughs> Very fun. Um, so you can get those in tie dye or you can get them in navy blue or a gold color. And um, Kat has all sizes. She's made a form. I, I'm so tired that when I first looked at it, I just looked at it. And I was like, there's no sizes on here. And it was because I, I didn't actually fill out the form. It's a two page form. So um, well, once you figure that out, if you're not me, uh, it's a super easy thing to do to sign up and you can have uh, uh, your rotary account build 
for the shirts. But we really want to get in the, the practice of wearing our rotary shirts when we go out and do service. All right, all shirts ordered by Tuesday of next week will be ready to pick up on Friday. I'm repeating some of this for our folks online, so. All right, so um, another really uh, great thing is that we are rocking and rolling already on Field of Honor. They've already had their first committee meeting. And last week uh, we had uh, a group go out to touch a truck event. I think that was at Wolf Ranch, wasn't it Jeannie? So uh, we had uh, Todd and Vicki and Mike and Jeannie and Scott and they represented our club out there, which is wonderful. And uh, one of the fun things that happened, I don't know if you all uh, remember, but we had this great picture of a little girl out at the field with honor and she was at the flags and um, she was out at the touch of the truck, truck event and they saw her. So they took in the, the picture of her on the field of honor is a, such a precious picture. It was on the display. So they had her hold the picture. And so there she is with a picture of herself. And her name's Maggie, I believe. Maggie? Maddie. So that was wonderful. Field of Honor has its second meeting on Tuesday, July 6th at 8 a.m. here at Mills. So um, thank you to everybody the, with that group that's already really working hard and doing tons and tons of groundwork. So um, we appreciate that. Um, Dennis, you want to come up and do your thing? Well, as I was just reminded, as a phone went off over here, Jim, and a phone went off over here, <laughs> in, my, in, my, in my prior club, uh, that was an egregious felony. It was usually worth a $5 donation. So coming into the next year, I may have to institute a few more rules. <laughs> I know Deuce is, Deuce is always good for it. Uh, a couple of PSAs. Uh, firstly, I'm going to be a little harder on the pin issue next uh, week or next month with the start of the new year. Our new executive secretary has the magnetic pins back there. So those of you who are reticent about plugging a hole in your shirt, there she's got, she's waving her little bag back there. You can go and buy one of the magnetic pins and uh, it'll do you good service. Uh, the second thing was Zach hit a home run for me today. Meatloaf and mac and cheese are my all time favorite. And one of the really important things I discovered about Patricia she and I both like ketchup on our mac and cheese. And if you haven't tried ketchup on your mac and cheese, get with the program. <laughs> look at the, look at the. <laughs> that should be a fine. You, you've crossed the threshold there now. Okay. Happy dollars. I, we already got a few dollars from Jim over here. Uh, we've only got two more weeks to fill the pot for our uh, this quarter's uh, polio fund. So who's happy out there? Oh, Nathan, all right. I'll contribute $10 for polio plus uh, pig. Uh, oh. You're not that young. <laughs> oh, Dave, I know he's got something. I'm glad that people are catching on to this anniversary thing now. You know, it, it ups the ante from one or two or five. Now it's right now it's real bucks. Okay, Aaron. Pardon? All right, Aaron. And for, for those of you who don't know, can anybody here spell Aaron's name? No. If you've, if you've looked at it, no, you can't, because I know you've looked at it. I can, I can spell it. Go. Aaron is E, is it A? <laughs> e, $5. R, R, O, N. All right. It counts. 
<laughs> Aaron, I, I asked him earlier, has anybody ever spelled your name right? And he said, no. <laughs> E-R-R-O-N. Welcome, Aaron. And <laughs> okay, Aaron, I got you marked in for $20. You don't have to give me money. You can actually, we'll actually bill you for it. Did you say 20? 20, all right. Good start. Oh, Michelle, what do you got back there? Whoa, start by heart. I'm sure you're going to collect that from him from his first paycheck. Right? <laughs> well, okay, Cap. <laughs> well, well, we'll try to alter that next year. <laughs> okay, one more. Somebody must be out there. Oh, Billy Ray, what do you got? What do you want? Sending the body. Oh, Gary is back. What do you say, Gary? Ten bucks. But my, my last, my last item of good news, bad news for you is is that I found an acolyte to become my two IC next year as a uh, sergeant at arms, and uh, Nick Leshke is going to help me out. So you won't have to deal with me all the time. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> All right, thank you, Dennis. Um, and real quick, one other uh, last announcement. Um, did, did everybody get uh, the from Rotary International information about the Rotary International Convention that's going to be in Houston? Did everybody get your email from them? Look at your email. I think what I'll do is I'm going to email you all. That convention is coming up. You didn't get yours. Okay. So I'm going to send out the links. Uh, to Josh Smith is reminding me this. Um, we have an opportunity to really participate in the international convention in Houston, which is not this year, but the next year. And I mean, 2022. So um, the, the signups early on, it, you get a big discount rate. Hotels go fast, um, so I want to make sure that if we have people that want to go that we get signed up, and actually you can get a discount if you have more than 15 people. I don't know if we will. I'd love to see us do that, so um, if you have any interest in participating, please uh, let me or Nathan know um, so we can take advantage of those discounts. All right. I am going to invite uh, our program today is part of our club. It's our racial unity committee and it has uh, been convened by um, Ron Swain. So I'm gonna invite Ron to come up and um, start, start us off. <laughs> Somebody, yeah. Thanks, George Ann. Um, I just figured out, I was sitting there and I was wondering, why is it that Dennis Pepin always picks on me? <laughs> Last week it was the pen, and today he tried to pin on me a phone disturbance. Oh, it was a disturbance. Well, I saw you jump when it went off. I figured it out. Dennis picks on me 
because he spent time in my home state of Georgia. <laughs> and he's had some of that good old Georgia peach. Right, Dennis? Absolutely. Thanks. You broke the code. Okay. Well, good afternoon, friends. And um, I'm delighted to um, start off this presentation uh, today. Uh, it was uh, June 12th of 2020 when past President George Lorigan invited me to make a presentation to our club. And that was done virtually. Uh, and his invitation was extended because there had been a murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he asked if I would come and reflect on that incident and share with the club my thoughts. When I came uh, to make that presentation <clears throat> last year, I shared with the club part of my life story uh, and indicated that I'm writing a book, my autobiography entitled the, the Life of a Black Man, colon, a story of hope. Part of my story was about growing up in Macon, Georgia and living on a dirt street called Ernest Street. And across Ernest Street, there were these apartments that had been built for uh, military personnel who were white. And in this apartment complex, there was a vacant field that the boys would gather on and play baseball. And I loved baseball. My favorite team was the Milwaukee Braves. But I could not go across Ernest Street and play baseball with those boys on that field. It reminded me of so many other incidents in my life, especially growing up where I couldn't do things because of the color of my skin. I was prohibited, especially in the Jim Crow South. Toward the conclusion of that presentation, I issued a call to action. What if Rotary International that had launched a successful campaign to eradicate polio almost 50 years ago, and has been fairly successful with that. What if Rotary undertook a campaign to eradicate racism? And 50 years from now, Rotarians then would look back and say, look what Rotary started in 2020. And so, 15 to 20 members of our club have been meeting weekly to listen and learn together about what we can do to change our perspective in this country around race. It's a difficult conversation to have, but it's about listening and it's about learning. We also agreed to take some action. And that action has resulted in the creation within our racial unity committee of three subcommittees, programs, communication, and outreach. And today is our intention to share with you, the members of this club, what this committee has been doing over the past 12 months. I'll be joined by leaders of these subcommittees to share with you what they have been involved with, with other members of the uh, committee. Uh -oh. Each <laughs> time we meet, we recite together, or one of the members of our committee reads the mission statement of our committee. 
This mission statement, the vision statement was created by a subcommittee, uh, which was uh, coordinated by Jerry Parker. Thank you, Jerry, and your, and your committee. So let me start as we start our meetings. Our mission is to develop and implement a model for the Rotary Club of Georgetown using the four-way test as a guide for ending individual and institutional discrimination based on race and or ethnicity. And our vision is that our model will be an inspiration for other Rotary Clubs and other organizations in exemplifying how people of all races and ethnicities can live in harmonious unity and equity. As we did some research and this was before Rotary, or we learned that Rotary had developed and created a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. We went back to Rotary's peace building pillar. And I'm not going to read this entire statement, but I just want to share with you some of the lines. We read this at each of our meetings. We refuse to accept conflict as a way of life. Rotary projects provide training that fosters understanding and provide communities with the skills to resolve conflicts. Rotary creates environments of peace. We recognize that Rotary is not a political organization. We spend a lot of time talking about it's not a religious organization. As a humanitarian organization, peace is a cornerstone of our mission. We believe that when people work to create peace in their communities, that change can happen and have a global effect. What I'm going to ask now is if other members of our committee would be prepared, uh, Barbara Garland, who chairs our subcommittee on programs will come now and share with you the work of her subcommittee. Barbara. As you can see, we had quite an illustrious group to plan our programs. And uh, we worked very hard to provide programs in which we could listen and learn to, from each other. And so several of the programs, go, oh, wrong way, there we go. So we talked about anti-Semitism, we talked about Hispanic Latino heritage, we talked about the black family, we talked about uh, our community initiative with the police department. We talked about rethinking values for the younger generation. So as we worked together, we hoped that we would be able to provide programs that were both interesting and informative, and that would help all of us gain a greater understanding of what it might mean if you have a black skin or a brown skin, or if you live in, a, in poverty, or if there are new ways of looking at life. <clears throat> Whoops, I'm doing it wrong. So we also initiated for the trumpet resources for further study. Each one of our committee members looked at some different interesting things on YouTube, books, uh, articles, and we put that in the trumpet every week so that our members could also educate themselves and see what was going on. We do the Minute for Peace now that is read at the end of each meeting because we feel it's very, very important to think about this whole issue in the context of peacemaking. Uh, we also worked with our Outreach and Communications Committee, so we showcased our work at the district conference a few weeks ago. Uh, we are working on a, a district-wide diversity, equity, inclusion program. However, our the 
person that might do it is not going to be available. So we're gonna look and work with the district to try to pull some things together uh, on a district-wide basis. So as we seek to educate and inform our members, we look at the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? We want all the things that we're presenting to you to fit into that parameter of the four-way test and of peace building. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over now to Jean Davenport and I'm gonna do the slides and hopefully I'll get them right this time, Jean. <laughs> so what I do to get him on there. Just Uh, it's it's difficult for me to begin uh, my part on this without taking a point of personal privilege to thank uh, this club for allowing me to participate uh, long distance uh, as a um, honorary member of this club, uh, a distinction that I hold very, <clears throat> very dearly. Uh, because I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I'm able to maintain my active role as a Rotarian through the E-Club in this district, but I also uh, cherish the, the honorary role at this club. And um, I've known Ron Swain for a long time uh, from, from the beginning of him joining our club. And when Ron asks you to do something, it's hard to say no. I'm sure others of you have faced that same challenge. But uh, I had kept up with Ron's uh, work with the courageous communications effort in Georgetown. And when Ron asked me if I would chair the outreach committee, I couldn't say no. And it's been a, a, a very personal, professional privilege to be a part of this process. Um, I want to thank uh, our committee members. Uh, Tom Howard, Tom Horton, Jim Albers, and myself. I'm a little bit old school. When you talk about have a meeting, I like to sit down face to face and meet and listen and learn and do. Uh, but we have managed, and that's not just this committee, but pretty much the entire committee has managed uh, to do the work of this committee via Zoom. Uh, and to me, that was a real challenge. But I but I think we've made progress, we've been effective, we've learned a whole lot about technology and how to use technology uh, uh, to, do, to do our work. But uh, I think we're all probably pretty anxious to get back where we can press the flesh and, and be very personal in our relationships. Uh, we struggled for a long time about what to call our committee, subcommittee. We talked about networking. We talked about uh, outreach. Uh, we talked about affiliation. But we finally uh, determined that our real vision is to, to reach out as, as we develop this model in Georgetown to make that model known in other circles uh, and, and uh, assist, inspire other clubs and other organizations to take up this challenge as we have done so. Uh, so far, we've made great progress. We, um, uh, we have about six clubs as seen on one of our slides there uh, that have worked very directly with us. We've had joint meetings. We've, uh, we've been guests of each other in their meetings about this very uh, subject. Um, most closely, uh, the Sun City Club has been an active member of the, the total committee. Uh, and because I'm active in the E-Club, uh, myself and Laura Adams have represented that club in, in these initiatives. Uh, we've also uh, established a relationship with the Rotary Club of Austin through uh, Tom Howard's uh, efforts. So good things are happening. And in the process, we have met and gotten to know um, Beatrice Zelvetti. She's the new DEI coordinator for our district. She's aware of who we are, what we're doing, what we're trying to do. 
and uh, we'll, we'll be a partner, a full partner, as we look to outreach into other uh, clubs in, uh, in the district. We also have a challenge to uh, work with organizations in our community. If you go back and look at the vision statement that uh, uh, Ron read, it talked about uh, or other organizations. And thus far, we have identified at least five and probably will identify more as we continue uh, organizations that uh, have a common interest. Uh, they, they're willing to share our agenda, communicate with us, learn from each other. Because as you can see by looking at the comprehensive list there of those six organizations, they're about uh, improving life for people in Georgetown, Texas. And, and so it, it's a great partnership to have and that, that's a, a wonderful outreach. And I'm sure we'll, you'll hear more, we'll hear more as we move along. Uh, and finally, uh, we'll just show the potential for outreach connectivity beyond uh, even our district. Uh, we had been put in touch by our governor with the folks in Minneapolis and you can understand why Minneapolis area Rotary Clubs would be active. Uh, and so we are uh, engaged in conversation with clubs and, and Zone 29, which includes the Minneapolis area. Uh, recently, uh, we went to the District 5870 Club Conference and we established connectivity with at least 19 club representatives who were willing to write their name on a piece of paper and say, we like a follow-up on this subject. And uh, Jim Dozer, who you'll hear from next, is uh, our liaison at the moment, going out and talking to some of those clubs to see if we can establish a relationship uh, with those clubs. We also are preparing to uh, have a space at the uh, Zone 29 25B Zone Institute, which is a, a conference in September uh, focused on developing uh, leadership at the district level. And uh, we, uh, we, we will have a presence there in engaging conversation with the governors, governor elects, governor nominees, and, and other district leaders. Uh, we also have a vision that we uh, would share a space at the International Convention. Uh, George Ann, maybe that'll help get some of us to the International Convention at your invitation uh, to, to share this vision, because obviously this subject is broader than Georgetown, but a part of our vision is that it starts with us here, and then we, we keep talking about a ripple effect out from here, but we uh, we feel confident that we're doing the right things here, and uh, hopefully we're able to share and provide leadership uh, and support to other clubs and organizations. Uh, I'm going to turn the program to Jim Dozer and let him talk about some of the communication aspects of what we're doing. Thank you. Jim, give me just one second here. David, let's I'm going to start talking while he's playing with this thing because I want to leave time for questions. I think you'll be able to hear me. They won't. They won't. And let's yeah. let's tell for those of you online, um, we're we are our, our slides here in the room are frozen, so you're seeing the slides because I took I took the sharing off. Are you sharing too now? I think they're seeing the slides, but. The folks in the room aren't. I don't think we need the slides. Okay. I will. I promise. Okay. We've covered a whole lot of stuff already, uh, but one of the things I want to point out to you is look at the uh, and it's the same thing as on this flyer. Look at that. I don't know if y'all realize those are faces. And uh, that is kind of a real graphic illustration of what we're up to. Uh, I will tell you that uh, one of the biggest issues that we have encountered is 
how hard it is to talk to each other about race. That is the kind of thing, subject that your temperature tends to go up a little bit when somebody starts talking about that. Um, and I will tell you where I have gotten to personally. Um, if somebody had asked me a year ago, are you a racist? I would have said no. And I still think probably I'm not, but I'm also at a point where I want to be able to say, well, maybe I'm not, but I want, but I think there is racism in the United States today and maybe the world, and I'd like to be part of the solution. So that's where I am today. Uh, some of the things we have done, uh, well, we made this flyer. And uh, our hope is that uh, of the 19 or more clubs that say, we want to know more about what you guys are up to, that we will go to them and show them what we're up to in this club. And so this flyer is something that we give out to everybody we talk to. So far, I've been able to give a presentation to the Sun City Club and to the Southwest Austin Club, and both of them have been very, very well received. And we're going to invite them, and we're going to invite you. You've got Ron uh, Swain's thing on here. If you want to participate in what we're doing, drop him a note, and we, we will put you on the mailing list. Uh, another thing that we have done, because when people tell their stories, it is very, very powerful. That's one of the reasons we got started, because Ron Swain told his story. So we are asking people to uh, record about four minutes of their personal story. And so far, we've got about six. We've got about six stories recorded, and I think we're going to show you one of them to today and it's barbarous because it's probably the best one of the bunch and uh but I, we only got about seven or eight minutes and i hope that you will ask questions thanks jim um jim has um <clears throat> thanks barbara oh and we got the resource we have uh if you want to know more about uh, educating yourself come on and get a copy of this it's resources of uh, TED Talks, videos, books, essays, stuff that will help you inform, uh, help you learn. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Gene, and thanks, Barbara. Um, the work that this committee is doing is hard work, but it's heart work. And um, this is a journey. It's not a sprint. This is something that will take most of us, the rest of our lives, if we are engaged in it. But our hope is that the next generation uh, will more freely and openly embrace the idea that we are all beloved children of God. Not only embrace the idea, but behave such. The work that, uh, that we've begun uh, is not something that uh, we take lightly. And as we have learned about others who are involved in uh, Rotary's peace building, peacemaking initiative through our contacts at the district conference in particular, on July the 16th, uh, our program will be uh, Kent Miller who is the chair of the World Peace Committee for our district. And he's going to talk about Rotary as a peacemaking organization. Our committee has been meeting diligently, weekly, and we need a break. And so we're going to move to every other week meetings in July and August. But come September, we'll start back on a weekly basis. I want to thank Marissa Austin, who's not here, for putting together our slide uh, presentation, our PowerPoint, even though you weren't able to fully uh, see it. I think they saw it online. And uh, the video that, that Jim referred to, uh, many members of our committee have told their stories on video. And we wanted you to see a, an example of that. Uh, we're not able to show that, but I believe George Ann is going to be able to provide a link in her weekly update to you 
And we invite you to just take a look and listen. Our objective is to listen and to learn before we act. This coming year is gonna be a year full of excitement for us, but our focus will remain to help eradicate racism so that 50 years from now, when most of us are no longer here, Rotarians will look back and say, look what the Rotary Club of Georgetown started in 2020. On your tables, there is a feedback sheet that uh, Barbara has developed. We invite you to uh, fill that out and you can leave it with me. And we want to get your thoughts on what you've heard, what you've seen, any ideas that you have about how we might move forward. So now if there are questions, we'll entertain those. I think we've got maybe five minutes. Questions? Yes, Chris. We, we are uh, really examining uh, these issues and we have an illustration which we can share with you, which shows that um, if we're talking about equality of distributing, uh, distributing resources, we give everybody the same resources. The illustration that we uh, use is one of three individuals of different heights. And the objective is to help those individuals see over a fence to watch a baseball game. I like baseball. We give the first uh, person, we don't give him anything to stand on because he can already see over the fence. The second person we give a box to stand on and that helps him to see over the fence. And the third little guy, we give two boxes so that he too can see over the fence. That's an illustration. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but- but I give you one more example? Well, well, I think one of the other uh, examples that I was gonna uh, suggest, and you may be leaving, leading in this direction, is that if we're talking about justice for all, is perhaps removing the fence, so that everybody can see given their own conditions and circumstances. But we've spent some time talking about this and um, we use a structure called uh, guidelines for difficult conversations. Yes, Jim. A real life example of equity has to do with people with disabilities. Um, our country built sidewalks for everybody and everybody has equal access to the sidewalk except people in wheelchairs can't get up over the curb. So we built little ramps at the corners so that they have an equitable opportunity to get on the sidewalk. So we made a little extra effort for people that needed it. Does that make a little bit of sense? Yeah. Other, other questions? Yes. So, where do you see this going as far as putting the work that you all have done into action? Where, where is, what is the outcome? Where, where's the, yeah, where's the action? So, if, if somebody feels like that they're on short end, they need a few boxes, how do we get a few boxes? That's a good question. And that, that becomes the matter that we can undertake as uh, Rotarians, perhaps to ensure that they have the resources that they need, or to identify other organizations uh, to help in meeting those, those particular needs. Our vision is that we will get to a point 
where we can all live in harmonious unity so that we don't have the kind of violence that we've witnessed over the last, let's say, three years. But we could go back much further than that. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Other questions or comments? Well, thank you. Um, thanks to George Lorigan for at least opening the door for this conversation to take place. Thanks to George Ann for allowing us to continue doing your year. And thanks to Nathan for encouraging us to continue to move forward. Uh, my hope is that uh, we will get to a day where there will be peace. Now, I understand there's a song, but my wife um, admonishes me not to sing. <laughs> and so I won't embarrass her. But there is a song. Let there be peace, but let it begin with me. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, and uh, thank you to the Racial Unity Committee. It really has been in, in a year that uh, had a lot of hard things going on. It, it, it was uh, the thing that this year, each week, I uh, took a lot of hope out of because uh, Rotarians are, I mean, we are people of action and we are problem solvers. And why not take on a very, very large, uh, long-standing uh, problem and uh, see what we can do, especially because Rotary uh, is known for uh, its peace building around the world. One of the first things that I learned when I came into this club is that Rotarians can get into places of conflict in the world that NGOs and governments cannot because of who we are. So thank you all very much, appreciate you. So uh, again, apologies about the technology. We worked so hard <laughs> and we got everything working and we played Barbara's video and it was showing and it was coming through the sound system. Um, those of you, we wanted, to, we always wanna have a good experience online as well as in the room and uh, we're still working at it. We're gonna have a tech team that's gonna come and work in this space and train. And so uh, one of these days we're gonna get it where uh, we don't even have to think about it too much, but I will, as Dr. Swain said, as Ron said, <laughs> I'm trying so hard on the first names. Uh, as Ron said, uh, I will send to everyone this slide deck, uh, as well as a link to Barbara's video. And we have a YouTube channel, Dr. Ron's, uh, uh, the presentation he made last June, or was it, was it June, the end of June? Um, is also online, so I'll send you a link to that. So if you have any interest in looking at all those things. I'm gonna make a couple of announcements about the calendar and then I'm gonna invite Jerry Berry to come up. Um, she's gonna read our uh, quote for our Minute of Peace uh, today. And so um, calendar, uh, we have, oh, Michael. Uh, yes. Uh, Ron said that if you would give the, if you don't fill out the feedback and who do you want, leave them on the table and the Racial Unity Committee members will pick them up. If they turn them in next week, if they want to think about it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. All right. So um, coming up again, I, I want to make sure everybody knows that we are not having a meeting on July 2nd. Our last meeting of this Rotary year is next Friday. We're gonna do our installation of officers. It's gonna be lots of fun. We'll celebrate everything that's happened this year. So I hope you'll join us for that meeting. Um, we have a budget meeting on Tuesday morning. Um, so if uh, you're interested in that, talk to Nathan. Um, we have a field of honor committee on July 6th coming up. So make sure you've got that marked on your calendar. And then San Gabriel cleanup is on June 26th.
So I think that that are all our calendar items. Jerry Berry, do you want to come up and read the quote? I'm going to. Okay. Thank you, Jerry Berry. And for those of you online, I think I hope you can see the quote. Um, so, uh, any an other announcements for the good of Rotary? All right, that makes it easy. All right, if you'll stand up then and join me in the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? second, is it the of third, and fourth, we are adjourned. Oh.